guys. So today I want to show you how I teach El Nino in my classroom. El Nino and La Nina are really complicated to understand, especially when you're just looking at these stationary pictures in a textbook. Um, and so I want to uh, use my handy dandy treatments and a globe and an aquarium to kind of make um, what they see in their text or their PowerPoint uh, kind of come to life so they can internalize it. So at this point in the unit, I've already taught the trade winds. And if you recall, the trade winds blow um, from the northeast, we have the northeast trade winds that blow from 30 degrees north to the equator. And so El Nino is happening in the equatorial part of the um, Pacific Ocean. I'm at school, so excuse the interruption there. And then we have the southeast trade winds and they're gonna blow uh, from 30 degrees south up to uh, the equator as well. So when I say that my blow dryer is the trade winds, those are the ones that I'm talking about. And when I'm showing how winds work, I do use them kind of a little tip for the kids. People, for example, if someone moved to Georgia from New York, we would call them a New Yorker. And so uh, the Northeast trade winds come from the Northeast and the Southeast trade winds come from the Southeast and the kids, um, that helps them to remember that, that you know, that's how we name winds. So that's something that you could use in your classroom if you want to. So in normal conditions, if this is how the wind is blowing, um, we're gonna have, uh, this is gonna be uh, South America. And so I'm just gonna write that sort of right here for the kids. This is South America, and this is going to be Southeast Asia. So I'm really talking about, um, you know, Indonesia, Malaysia, Peru, Ecuador, um, those parts. And so what you see here, I've just taken some water and put blue food dye in it. And this is just um, some vegetable oil. Um, and then this is showing us the difference between the uh, cold, deep water and the warmer surface water. And then this line here is the thermocline um, because oceanic water, it doesn't really mix the surface water and the deep water really um, kind of stay separated except for upwelling and downwelling. So I'm gonna show you that. So here's the trade winds. If I turn them on, they're gonna blow across the uh, Pacific Ocean um, from the east to the west. And you can see here that at the surface, I'm gonna have cold surface water off the coast of South America. And then off the coast of Southeast Asia, I'm gonna have warm surface water kind of piling up. And what's gonna happen there, that's gonna affect atmospheric pressure. So under normal conditions, uh, when I have cold water at the surface, um, the air aloft or above it is gonna also be cooler. And so cold air is actually gonna sink. We have sinking air, that's gonna make high pressure at the surface. And I know this is a little silly, but high pressure makes for happy weather. So I have like a nice little happy sunshine man going on. Um, and if you think about Peru or Ecuador, I'll, I'll tell the kids, you know, think about, think about Peru and think about an, a, a llama or an alpaca. And you see someone in, um, and they're, they're in this really dry mountainous environment. And if you think, I mean, is it raining on the, on the alpaca? And they say no, you know. So it's nice and dry, happy weather, little uh, high pressure. And over here, that warm water, as it piles up, it's going to create warm, uh, warm air. And I'm going to have a low pressure. So I'm gonna have this lighter air, low pressure, right? Um, it's less dense, and so it's gonna rise, and so it's gonna rain. And so I'll ask the kids, I'll say, in, in Southeast Asia, what's their staple crop? And so of course they'll all say rice, and then I'll say, well, what's that, what's that grown in? And they'll say patties of water. And so this low pressure that um, sets up over here, that allows them to, to grow that. And so then they start to understand a little bit better. Now. If you look one more time, I've actually placed on the bottom of my aquarium some uh, old fish food. And why did I do that? Well, what ends up happening here is um, as the surface water is blown to the west, detritus, which is dead stuff, will start to come to the surface and that will feed areas of primary production. So we'll start to get um, nice feeding grounds for fish. So over here, we're gonna have a filling. We're gonna have cold nutrient rich water coming to the surface. And then that makes for great fishing grounds off the coast of South America. And that's where El Nino actually gets its name. Um, fishermen off the coast of Ecuador and Peru, they noticed around Christmas time, El Nino's for the boy or the Christ child. They noticed that this phenomenon would happen and that's where it even got its name. But um, this is a normal condition. So we have upwelling. El Nino disrupts this upwelling. So let me show you what causes that. So if this is normal, 
of the trade winds are set up and, and what happens with El Nino is they actually weaken and they'll start to reverse. So as you can see, that warm surface water is actually going to become cooler. And then this cold uh, surface water actually will become warmer. And of course, that's going to affect the atmosphere also. So now I'm going to have high pressure here, air is sinking, and I'm going to have drier conditions. And over here, I'm going to start to have low air pressure. I'm going to have warm surface water. And I'm going to have rain. So when your kids are starting to apply this to what happens in these areas of the world, you're going to see droughts and wildfires here. In 2016, there was a really strong El Nino, and there were news stories of wildfires in Indonesia. Over here um, in Southeast, uh, excuse me, South America, you're actually going to have flooding. And there was a lot of flooding and landslides in California due to El Nino. So that's El Nino. Now, we left one out. We had normal El Nino. And what ends up happening with La Nina is, if we come back, La Nina, if this is normal, La Nina is just extreme normal. So the trade winds are stronger. And so if they're stronger, I'm gonna have high pressure here, but it's gonna be uh, too dry. I'm gonna have droughts and wildfires in the Eastern Pacific. And then over here with El, um, Southeast Asia, I'm gonna have uh, low pressure, but I'm gonna have too much rain, it's gonna flood. So that's El Nino, La Nina, and normal conditions. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. And um, I'm gonna post some links on my blog for other online activities that help to supplement this after they get the main idea. Thanks you guys.